Greetings fellow Gorehounds and welcome back to another Blood Splattered Vlog. I'm the Horror Guru. And I'm Count Dracula. And we just watched the Netflix original horror film, I Am a Pretty Thing That Lives in the House. Spoiler, think, I, it was me. I, I, <laughs> at least I'm, I'm pretty sure that was the whole title. It's kind of a mouthful of a title. It is. It is a full it sentence. Is. In fact, like when we were looking it up on Netflix, like the full title couldn't even pop up on our TV screen because it was too long for the Netflix app. Yeah. Um, which was pretty amusing. Uh, so this is a movie that I had seen show up in my Twitter feed a lot with some glowing recommendations for the most part. So I kind of had it on my list of movies I needed to see before the end of the year. Yeah, it had also been uh, featured in an issue of Rue Morgue. Yes, this is also true. And so I was kind of excited going into this because I kind of like slow burn horror movies. And when I heard that it had something to do with like Shirley Jackson, I was like, I love Shirley Jackson. She's, yeah. she's one of the best horror authors of all time. So fuck, fuck yeah, I want to see a, a movie that's going to evoke the mood and tone of Shirley Jackson. Unfortunately, that's about all it evokes. Yeah. Is the mood and tone, but nothing else. Yeah, nothing else. <laughs> Unfortunately. No. I. Spoilers. We didn't like it. Yeah, yeah. Well, like we're we're gonna we're gonna try to be a little spoiler free for now. But yeah, I did not like this movie at all. Like yeah. this movie reminded me of another movie I watched called The Last Will and Testament Testament of Rosamund Lee. Um, which is a movie when I was hanging out on Dreddit, everyone seemed to really love and it kept coming up as like one of the best movies of that year. And when I finally saw it, I kind of gave up on Dreadit because I hated The Last Will and Testament of Rosamund Lee so Whoa, much. Oh, yeah. Like, they just fucking... Oh. Well, basically what both movies do is both movies are like 50% voiceover of really floofy writing with, like, slow-moving montages of a house and 50% actual story. But the story is leaving so much out of the audience's, like, grasp that I, I I just get so uninterested and I stop paying attention. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 it does that fucking thing. Well, first of all, it starts with a voiceover narration that's way too fucking long over this really slow moving image. Like I've 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 list, I've read and listened to Shirley Jackson both on audiobook and on book form and I've never gotten this disinterested listening listening or reading to her writing. Yeah. Whereas the the writing in this that's supposed to evoke Shirley Jackson, I like within the first few sentences I just stopped caring about what they were talking about like Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's way too wordy, it's way too floofy, it's trying a little too hard and I'm just like, "You know what? Why don't we instead of introduce the character this way, why don't we introduce her with the scene where she walks in and says my name is blah 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 yeah because i would have preferred that and then you could have evoked the mood of shirley jackson with like the scares and the and the and the dread of the house but instead they had to add the writing too and this is not shirley jackson level writing no it is not not even close it's trying really hard to be but it just isn't and and it's also super confusing because this character goes through this basically basically what this movie's about is you have this um what are they called like um home nurses they yeah, uh, I forget what it's called. It's like live-in care yeah, nurse. Yeah, they're like hospice know. care nurses. They they come to your house and they take care of you when you're either sick or, in this case, really old. Yeah. And so she is basically... This, the main character has come to this house to take care of this old lady who was an old crime thriller writer. Which is weird because the stories she wrote didn't really seem like crime thrillers. No, they're not. <laughs> they're all they're all homages to Hurley, Shirley Jackson stories. Yeah. But Shirley Jackson wasn't... a crime writer she was a horror writer yeah yeah who, who primarily dealt in ghost stories yeah you know and and in this case she did write ghost stories really weird ghost stories that didn't really seem to really have plots yeah <laughs> like if it wasn't for the images they're showing alongside it you would not know that these ghost stories had any plot they just seem like descriptions of a character <laughs> yeah yeah and the thing is is that th th there's the first problem right there kind of in a nutshell which is oh we're going to say that Shirley Jackson was too good to be a horror author. Now, to make that leap already is like, you got to be fucking kidding me. You're making a movie about Shirley Jackson and ignoring the fact that she's a fucking horror author. And this is a ghost story. It is a ghost story. So this is a horror movie. So I kind of I kind of didn't like that. This feels like one of those movies that I don't know for sure. I've never read an interview with the guy who made this, so I don't know. But this feels like the kind of movie that's made by someone who feels like they're too good for horror. Yeah. Like, it, it really feels does. like that. You know, um, which is too bad, but it's too bad that that's what you're fucking doing. 
Um, uh, some of my other problems with this movie is that I normally really love slow burn ghost stories, but by by about halfway into this movie, I was just like, oh my god, is it over yet? It yeah. The editing and pacing of this movie is atrocious. It's really excruciating. Even when you have some really cool, like really creepy scares happening at certain points in the movie, they're few, too few and far between. Um, uh, some other like creepy slow burns that actually worked, like fucking. The Woman in Black worked really well. Oh, Woman in Black worked amazing. That was yeah. really awesome. Like, Oculus was really good. That was really awesome. You know, I even like Insidious. But this... Ah, oh, Jesus. I don't know, man. Like, I really wanted to like this movie, but I found it really hard to pay attention. Yeah, yeah. It was excruciating you know. was kind of the word for it. And in order to piece together what's kind of going on, you kind of have to pay attention. But the problem was, is I reached a point where I didn't care anymore. Yeah, I was paying attention to the whole thing. I was like, I was like, no, I'm gonna pay attention to this one because this is a movie where if it's good, I really, because I really wanted it to be good, man. Yeah, I really wanted it to be well, good. Well, especially someone who's evoking Shirley Jackson. Yeah, you know, like that's that's it's like when someone revokes Lovecraft or Stephen King. Yeah, and you, yeah want you want it to, be to get good. it right. You know, you, you, you know? absolutely want it to get it right. But like, instead of at the mountains of madness, this is kind of more like that um, that one Stephen King themed horror game they made um, that has like the same like black monster. Oh, Alan Wake. Alan Wake. Yeah. To where it has a lot of potential, and a lot of good in it, but it overall just kind of shits the bed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Big problem with Alan Wake is that. Actually, no, more I think about it, Alan Wake is kind of, a, 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 if you played it, it's actually a great analog, because you're like, wow, I'm just walking around. I'm just walking around. Right. Oh, and now I read a thing that sounds like it was written by Stephen King. Ironically, I think it was, was it Alan, Alan Wake's, like, American Nightmare DLC they made, which was done, like, in the style of, like, a 70s zombie movie. That was a way better game than the actual proper well, game. I believe it. I believe <laughs> it. I didn't play it, but, like, I think I it was Alan it. Wake. I, I might be mixing it up with a completely different franchise, and I apologize for that. Well, yeah, yeah, but I do remember, like, Alan Wake had, like, a major DLC that they did. So, like, I think we're reaching the point where we might as well just go into spoilers, because... Otherwise, I, I don't think we have anything to talk about. Exactly. Yeah. So, this is not a recommendation for me. Um, do so at your own peril. It is a Netflix original, so it will be available on Netflix if you have a Netflix account for free, so you don't lose anything for watching it except your time. <laughs> yeah, which may be a little more precious. May be a little more precious, but at least we're getting a vlog out of it, so uh, it's, all is not lost. Anyway, uh, let's move on to the spoilers. <laughs> Alrighty then. So, uh, God, what's the first thing we should talk about in the spoiler section? Oh like, my God, I think the first thing is is that the like ten minutes into the movie, I'm like, she's a ghost. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I was yeah. right. And then they're like, Oh, is she a ghost or is she the old woman's dementia? And I'm like, she's gonna be both. Or is she just? Or did she just die? Because yeah. at, at the end, I think she was supposed to die, but she dies in like, oh god, I know you're evoking like old horror movies because you're doing Shirley Jackson and stuff, but th she literally just dies of fright. Yeah. At one point in this movie, and I'm sitting there going like, well, hold on, this is like 2016 and almost 17, and we're having a girl just, oh no, I, 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 I feel like I'm gonna faint. Like it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah. <laughs> that was the entire fucking movie. And I was just, just like, like, what? I get that this is a mousy character and all that stuff, but and I know that it's possible to freak yourself out into a heart attack, but it just felt super pathetic. Especially <laughs> since, and this is probably the big reason why it really doesn't work, is because the thing that scares her is hilarious. <laughs> Yeah. Because there's this reoccurring yeah. thing about the ghost that she's reading about in the books. That, okay, so basically the author wrote these books about this girl she knew who told her her story and was dead. I guess told her her story while she was dead. I guess the, the idea was the ghost was talking to her. Yeah, apparently the ghost is talking to her. Because the ghost lives in the wall because it was buried in the wall, I guess. Um, God, like I said, I, I was having trouble paying attention. So the ghost is telling her her story or whatever, so she's writing all these books on it. But here's the weird thing. Every time the main character picks up a page from one of the books, it feels like, continue, like a continuation of the previous book. So are these just all one book? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's all, they're all supposed... I think they're all supposed to be from that one book, The Girl on the Walls. Ah. But there are a couple of problems with what happens. One, 
At one point, she's looking at... Okay, oh, God. All right, so the first <laughs> bad thing that happens is she opens the book up, and she starts reading the first page, and they show us the first page, and then she starts narrating the first page. They don't sync up. Yeah, yeah, it's, the, it's the a completely different writing. The page she writes is not the page you see, and yep. but it's obviously supposed to be the beginning of the book, and I'm like, What? There's all, they're also doing this artsy thing where, like, when she's reading the stories, it's, like, showing us, like, a weird slow-motion view of the main character in the book, as well as cutting to the author. Yeah. But I couldn't tell if it was supposed to be the author voiceovering or the main character, because they seem to have similar voices. Yeah. So I was a little confused there. But every time it cuts to the author, it makes sense. Like, she's typing on the typewriter, so, okay, she's writing the story, and so they're reading it as she's typing it. But then at one point... She picks, she finds a manuscript of an unpublished book, or at least one of the original manuscripts of, of whatever book she's reading. Yeah. And she finds it in a, in a, uh, in a, in a moldy box. In a moldy box that's in a closet, you know, hidden up high, and it's got moldy pages that have obviously just been there for a while. And she's going through it and reading it, and it, when it shows the author's side of that, She's still on the typewriter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a handwritten <laughs> manuscript, but we make this big thing out of the fact that she used a typewriter. And you're just like, well, I know a lot of writers would sometimes write it by hand and then typewrite it, but you're now cutting to the typewriter as if this version was written on the type. That doesn't. That is really terrible visual storytelling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it ma- and it makes no sense because you're like, it can't be Polly writing it because she doesn't start telling you the story until she's a ghost. Yes, yes. You know, and it's not like the fucking you see a pen move by itself no, or no. anything. It's like, oh, this is the original manuscript. I'm like. Well, we can assume that maybe she hand wrote it and then type it, but then if that never happens. She's just writing on the typewriter directly, like a lot of people do. I think including the way Shirley Jackson wrote. Sure, sure. So why do you have a written manuscript for a typed man? That didn't make any fucking sense. It, it was such a weird juxtaposition of images, because I'm just sitting there going, like, wow, that could have easily been fixed if he just had her, like, writing down. Before. Yeah, 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 exactly. She could have just been writing it down, it's, or they could have been moldy typed pages. It's one of the many small things that happens in the movie that just left me going, like, okay, what's happening? Oh, I don't care anymore. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? and, and another thing that is a that is a big problem, another thing that's a really big problem, is the fact that... The main, the main fucking mystery of the story, that being, hey, is there a dead girl in the walls or not, isn't answered. Yeah, I can assume that maybe, because if you take the whole ending literally, then she ran into the ghost, and then she died of fright, and then the old lady dies because there's no one to take care of her, and then they're both part of the house, and then someone else moves in, and now they're haunting those people. Yeah, maybe. But it's not done in a way that makes that clear. No. It's like it's unintentionally ambiguously shown, and actually, I don't even know if it's intentionally ambiguous, but it's one of those things where I'm just like, no... You can't, I don't know, it, if it is supposed to be ambiguous, it's not satisfactory. No, no, it really isn't. Like, you know, like, part... like, Inception is satisfactory, That's you right. know? That's right, it's very satisfactory, You yeah. know, but this is not very satisfactory. I'm just sitting there going, like, God damn it, what's another case where I barely know what's actually happening, and I'm supposed to be engaged by this? Like, I just... Yeah, 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 I could actually, here's the thing, I actually could follow everything that was literally happening on the screen. The problem was, is you're still sitting there going... Why? Well, there's also, like, some small little things. Like, the choice to have them have one of those chair racks that where you put the chair up on the wall. Yeah. So, like, there's this one scene where she's sitting there on the phone, and I'm sitting there going, like, oh, shit, there's a chair on the wall. So I thought that was supposed to be, like, a scary moment that she's going to notice or whatever. Yeah. I'm like, oh, it's not. God damn it, I have no idea what's happening yeah, yeah, anymore. Yeah, yeah, There's also a moment where she's talking to someone on the phone. She's like, oh, I don't know if I want to go there. Okay. The and thing, then the thing is, is I'm like, go where? There's no part of this house we've established she is afraid of. And on top of that, the way they handle her on the phone with never showing us who's on the other end, never putting any sound on the other end, it made it feel like we're supposed to assume that there's no one actually on the other end. Yes. Like this girl's absolutely. crazy, you know? And so it was just, 
I don't know. Just something about the way they decided to shoot and edit this movie just left me going like, I think you're making things more confusing when what's literally happening is actually kind of simple. Yeah. <laughs> Um, it's like, it's like the filmmaking is making things seem more complicated than it really is. Yes. You know, and that's, that is actually a good, that is actually probably a good reason why I felt this movie was a little too pretentious. This movie is way too pretentious. And I'm a guy who likes art house films like Antichrist. And, oh yeah, yeah, no, Antichrist is great. Yeah, you know, it's a great movie. I love that movie, but I'm sitting there watching this movie going like, oh my God, just shut up, you pretentious piece of shit. Like, yeah. Yeah, you know, I just oh. and there the, the the thing that's sad is that there are very there are a couple of moments where you're like actually this is kind of working. Well, like that scene where she sees the mold on the wall, and then later she's washing some dishes or something, I think, and then she starts noticing mold on herself. Yeah, and then her arms start growing really big and bulbousy, and then yeah, she yeah, starts yeah. freaking out. That was a great body horror moment. That was like I'm looking at that going, ooh, yeah, yeah, Jesus. yeah, yeah. And so you're thinking like, oh, she's like. The yeah. House, There's know. a weird subplot where she tries to talk to a television set. Yeah. Which was, I thought, an indication that she's supposed to be crazy. But I wasn't sure if the ending was confirming that or not. Yeah, yeah, you don't know. So she's sitting there talking to this television set and clicking it on and off. And then there's, like, this scare of, like, the ghost and the reflection of the TV when she turns it off. And that was a decent scare, though I was still confused on why the television set thing was happening in the first place. Yeah. You know, it, 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 like, it would be one thing if you had it be like, oh, well, the reason why she took this house is because she heard that, that the author was in this house and that the house was haunted and that's how she wrote all her books. And so she wants to talk to the ghost. That would have been something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that would have been something. That would have given me something. Because you know what the other thing I don't know about this whole story is? What is the main character's actual want? Oh, shit. You're right. I have no idea. Yeah. I have no fucking idea. Like, she's just there. I have no investment in the main character because I have no idea what she wants. Shit. That's like writing 101. <laughs> oh, fuck. No. Yeah. You know? Yeah, you have no idea. Holy crap. You have a better idea of what the fucking uh, executor of the estate wants. I know wants. what he wants. I know what the old lady wants. She she keeps wanting to talk to Polly again. Yeah. You know? Yeah. The executor of the state just wants to spend as little money as possible. Mm -hmm. But the main character, I have no idea... This is just, as far as I know, this is just a job to her and she doesn't want anything exactly. else. Exactly. And because I don't know what she wants, I don't know the motivation of why she does certain things. You know? Yeah. Why is she going through this box and thing? Is she bored? Yeah. I, like, you know? She like, doesn't seem bored. She seems like she's terrified of everything. Yeah. So what's going on? Like, is she reading the book to pass the time? I could buy that. But, like, it's just, it's a fundamental problem on a writing level. This is a movie... I think I think we read a review somewhere that said that it excelled at mood and atmosphere, but failed on a basic storytelling level. Yes, and, and that I, was extremely fair. I think that that's completely accurate. accurate because this is a gorgeous looking movie. The cinematographer did a great job with the way the movie looks, and the actors are all doing a decent job of portraying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What their characters well, are. Well, the, the movie looks great when it's not doing stupid shit. Well, oh god, all those shots of like the darkness and like the ghosts like turning and stuff when she's doing the voiceovers, which is just like this artsy. Oh, the ghosts are always looking. I'm just like I, I don't need this. What's actually happening? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's nice and all, but what the fuck's supposed to be happening? If you want to go David Lynch, go full David Lynch, not half Lynch it. I don't want a half Chub Lynch. Like, yeah, no, don't. <laughs> like, you know? like it's one of those. It's like imagine like. <laughs> Imagine, like, fucking, you got, like, Joe Lynch directing a movie that is an homage to Shirley Jackson. Okay, now remove all that talent. <laughs> David Lynch. David, oh, shit. Did Joe, Lynch Joe, would Lynch? Be, Joe Lynch would be a completely different type of okay, movie. Okay, you're right, you're right. I meant David Lynch. At that, if it was a Joe Lynch, uh, uh, Shirley Jackson-based movie, by the end of the movie, the chick would be, like, taking out, like, the shotguns and taking out the kids yeah. and stuff. <laughs> Because Joe Lynch loves himself some chicks with weaponry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, either. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You can tell what makes Joe Lynch, uh, you know, yeah, work yeah, down yeah. There. Like, is some girl be like, you know, breaking down like a fucking door. It's like, ah, lottery this. Yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah. <laughs> Which I, yeah. I'd watch that movie. <laughs> Um, um, so, babe, I, oh God, I remember I, I, I kind of sidetracked myself. Um, so the scary moment, like the, the, the thing that this is all building up to is when we finally see Polly the ghost <laughs> and they've set up that <laughs> when the author talks about Polly, he talks about her, she talks about her in this metaphorical way where she's always spinning, turning her back on things to the point where her feet and her head are facing two different directions. Yeah. 
And so literally that's what they do. They have the top half of her body facing one direction while the, uh, the other, the bottom half are facing another. So she looks like she's walking backwards while walking forwards at the same time. Now, in theory, I can see how they thought that would be a scary image. Yeah. But the moment it popped up on screen, both Jack and I started laughing our asses off. It's so bad. It's so it bad. Looked it looks like, so dumb. It felt like something out of a ghost story parody. Like a yes. scary movie scene. Yeah, like, it really did. You know, like she walks through like the doorway and then it walks past. And I was just like... <laughs> Like, so that did not work. As a result of that, when the main character dies of fright after seeing it, I was just like, bullshit. <laughs> like, <laughs> bullfuck. I believe, I would believe it if someone died in fright in the original Insidious looking at the creepy la old lady in black. Oh, yeah, yeah, totally. I would totally. believe it if someone died, like, in fright looking at the woman in black in... <laughs> in the woman in black, the, in the yeah. In black. But this ghost was not that scary <laughs> no no like the well let's let's put it this way like how bad is this image okay um there's a it's another... on the poster oh yeah it's i'll totally put it right here poster. it's on the poster it looks better on the poster than in the actual movie by the way <laughs> yeah because like when i think of like one of the problems you would think normally is like well maybe it's because she's supposed to be really pretty and so the scariness doesn't work and I'm like, no, bullshit, because I will give you another beautiful ghost who was terrifying, and that was the lady in white. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the ghost of the mom who's gorgeous. Like, she is still fucking terrifying when she starts crying. Yes. You're just like, oh, God. Like, ah. you know. The other thing is, and this is a completely superficial thing. I am a pretty thing in that lives in the house. Oh, my God. Yeah, this is, this is the killer. Um. I'm not saying the main character is ugly. She's not. She's just kind of plain looking. Uh, I feel like if you're going to make a big deal out of the pretty thing, she should look a little bit more like, I don't know, like the, the chick that played Siren, you know, like the chick that yeah. played Lily. Someone that you look at and you go like, oh, that is a pretty face. Yeah, or I don't know, maybe the girl they got to actually play the ghost of Polly. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because like that girl was super pretty. Well, it's obvious that she's also supposed to be a pretty thing that lives in the house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But by the end of the story, mm -hmm. if the pretty thing that lives in the house is supposed to be the Lily of this story, yeah. then they both need to have that level of beauty physical exactly. beauty exactly i was glad though that they made one blonde and one not because i was having oh we'd get so confused if they didn't. i was having trouble mixing up the author in the flashbacks with the main character yes like because i, I was convinced the idea was that the main character was the hallucination of the that the demented author was having of her younger self that she was confusing with the ghost that she used to talk to when she lived here alone. Especially since from a lot of the author flashbacks, we're always seeing the back of her head. Yeah, and the fact, yeah, we're seeing the back of her head and they're narrated by the main character, mm -hmm. not the author or the woman playing the young author. And if you want to know how bad this thing wants to just be an homage to Shirley Jackson while fucking everything up, the image on the back of the book, the author picture on the back of the book is the actress who plays the young version of the author in a pose, in a dress, in a seashell necklace, just like the picture of Shirley Jackson that. on the back of the of her yeah, books. I saw that. You and, know. and I'm and I'm like, you can't. How can you fucking be so in love with Shirley Jackson while fucking ignoring the fact that all of her novels are horror stories? Yeah. Yeah, and you know, that would be like, oh no, Stephen King wasn't a horror author. He wrote supernatural thrillers. Kiss my ass. You the, the, know, the other the other part of it is that you're you're I also don't know, okay. The other character who I do not know what they want is Polly. Yeah. Now that being said, you can have the ghost not have clear intentions, but when both your main character and your main villain have no clear motivation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It it gets really hard to be invested. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And and there was another aspect of like Shirley Jackson that I'm like, if you're gonna homage Shirley Jackson and put in a, a an insert character that is her, why didn't you bring this why didn't you build it around this? Shirley Jackson was a witch. 
Oh, she was like yeah. a flat out like Wiccan neo pagan witch. See, that would have been a cool detail to have, and like have at the end of the movie, it's just like like, like maybe she was trying to get Polly to possess the girl or something. Yeah, yeah, I, that, that would have been. A, oh my god, no, that would have been a total Shirley Jackson. That would have been going full genre with it, but I would have been down with it because at that point in the movie, I wanted something more to happen. Oh my god, no, that would have been great. <laughs> like have like you know Polly possess the girl, and it's like I have her back, and be like, no, that's a total Shirley Jackson move. That is the one. One thing I will give this movie outside of the cinematography, um, because then you got that lesbian subtext going. Yes. Yeah. Well, I was half expecting it to be like Polly was like her lesbian lover. Yeah, me like too. That. Like me cause, too. Because when she starts talking about Polly, like like she's this old friend that she really really misses. It sounded like the way someone talks about like their their ex husband. Yes. Like, and stuff like that. So it would have been nice to have that actually happen. That would have been a cool detail. Plus, my favorite part of the movie. Is that actress playing the Shirley Jackson type? Oh yeah, like her yeah. playing this like this this old lady who's clearly losing it. She's probably got Alzheimer's, a little bit of dementia going on. That performance is fantastic, and when she's on screen, I was glued to it and I couldn't stop paying attention. Yeah, yeah, she, the the, uh, the the old actress is really good. Unfortunately, she's not on screen for most of the movie, which is really weird because this character is supposed to be taking care of her. <laughs> Yeah, she shows up for a grand total of like ten minutes of the fucking yeah. movie, but she's the. I. St- yeah. You know, like everything, uh, everything that this movie is trying to do, it fails at. Yeah. You know, I, it's oh. really too bad because there's a lot of talent in this movie that could have been used better. So, like we said, like I said. Uh, when we're in the non-spoiler section, I honestly don't recommend this. Unless you just really want to have some time to kill and you're a really big fan of Shirley Jackson. Kind of like how... And you want to be very, very disappointed. Because, because believe me, I, I'm, I'm a huge Lovecraft and Stephen King fan and I've watched shitty things because they were homaging that. Yeah. So believe me, I get it. But I personally don't recommend spending too much time on this movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now that review did it, it evoked the mood, but nothing else. Exactly. Any of the other things going for it. And that's a real fucking shame because one of the great things about movies that homage authors um, like uh, my favorite one is actually Kafka. Kafka's great. Kafka's great. Yeah, I really love that one. Like Kafka, Naked Lunch. Um, at the mountains of madness. At the mountains of madness. That's evoking two yeah. authors at once. Yeah, but like when it's like an author love movie, you always in the mouth of madness. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> yes. Yeah, yes. Sorry. sorry, the poster's over there now. Um, <laughs> in the mouth of in madness. the mouth of madness. But like when you do an author like love note movie, I, I, God damn it, you got to get that tone right. Yeah, you got to feel like. You gotta get the tone right, and the, just oh man, no. And the thing is, this is what's so frustrating is I want I'm looking for something to like about this because I just don't want to hate it. But the problem is, is it's bad. It's really bad. This isn't Stranger Things. No, you know this isn't a no. Netflix product that is homaging like a previous creator and doing it amazingly. Yeah, you want to like a, a better fucking Shirley Jackson homage is the fucking. You ever see Waxworks too? I've seen Waxworks 2. All right, too. in Waxworks 2, there's a parody of The Haunting of Hill House. Oh, yes. That's right. got Bruce Campbell and Marie Holy Mears shit. sort of yeah. in it. And that is a way better homage to Shirley Jackson no. and the movie than this. And you've got to understand something about Shirley Jackson. Her imagery goes fucking insane sometimes. Like, there's in The Haunting, of- there's that fucking scene where a guy's, like, fucking crucified to a wall but there's a bird eating his liver like Prometheus and you're Absolutely. like what the fuck the, 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 my, one of the things about Shirley Jackson's writings is there's a lot of stuff in her writings that at the time when they started making movies about her like the original Haunting yeah. they couldn't adapt a lot of stuff she was writing because it was just not proper for cinema no at the time. no no like you want to do a <laughs> you want to do an adaptation of the lottery oh How god are you that'd be amazing film? if you could oh do it oh my god if you could do it <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I feel like, in many ways, I feel like that's kind of what the Wicker Man is. Like, make it, make it about dudes on an island. <laughs> yeah. No, no, Wicker Man kind of, kind of is the best you can get at yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know. Oh, oh man. So that, now we've reached the point where we're just talking about our love of Shirley Jackson. Yeah, so which I there's think, quite a lot of it. I, I think it's about time for us to close this out. Um, 
So uh, peace out, my fellow gorehounds, and uh, don't bother. Don't yeah. bother. <laughs>